Um, in the last two years, um, my group have been inspecting steam turbine last day's blades, um, and in that period, we have found roughly around 100 defective blades um, in a population of about 2,000 blades inspected. So we have found significant numbers of, of cracked blades, more than what we originally envisioned. So what I wanted to do is just share the experience we had, uh, we've had with these inspections. Because we've inspected quite a lot of blades and we've seen a lot of defects, it's allowed us to evaluate um, the techniques that are available, the NDT techniques available, and compare those with one another. If we look at where the uh, high stress concentration is on the blades we've inspected, it tends to be in the upper serrations. On the uh, suction side, it tends to be in the centre of the, uh, the blade root, and on the pressure side, it tends to be towards the extreme ends of the root. If we look at the sort of cracking that's been observed, they tend to lie up exactly where the ice stress concentration, concentration is. is. Um, what does vary is whereabouts exactly those cr cracks occur, the orientation of the defects, um, and basically characteristics of the cracking. That depends on what the uh, mechanism is in the first place that caused the cracking. In terms of blade root NDT, there's four methods really. Uh, the first two are the most common methods uh, used to date, which is a fluorescent magnetic particle inspection or a fluorescent penetrant inspection. <coughs> These are relatively inexpensive techniques that rely on the uh, blades taken out from the rotor. A third ex situ inspection technique, which is relatively modern, is eddy current inspection. Uh, and moreover, more recently, is eddicrant array inspections. These are starting to take over from MPI and dive pen inspections. The only real technique to test last day's blades in situ is with ultrasound. Uh, that can be manual uh, pulse echo and it can also be phased array inspection. Over recent years, phased array has become more prevalent. Uh, my group have been inspecting last day's blades for well over 10 years uh, with phased array technology predominantly. Uh, in that time, uh, up till about two years ago, we found no defects. And in the last two years, we found roughly about 100 defects. When we do our inspections, it's always phased array inspection first. And then once we find defects, we will deblade the rotor and we'll try other techniques to try and find the full population of defects. So when we develop NDT techniques, the phase array inspection is based on a five millimeter long slot by one millimeter deep. So that is typically the size of defect we say we can find, or more importantly, the size of defect we will miss. If you look at the literature, it tends to assume that magnetic particle inspection and dive pen can find defects of one to two millimeters in size, in length and above. So you'd say that the MPI and dive pen would be a better technique, albeit you do need to take the blades out to do that inspection. Because of the assumption of the capability of magnetic particle inspection <coughs> and dive penetrant inspection, there's been less of a, a need to develop more expensive eddy current techniques um, for when the blades are taken out for inspection. So really that's been on the back burner till, till recent times when we've seen where dive pen and MPI have been letting us down. What I want to do is just uh, present three case studies of, of rotors from different stations uh, designed by different OEMs uh, and what we found when we compare the various NDT techniques. The first station, this station we have done four previous inspections by phase three inspection and found no defective blades and then on the fifth inspection we found two cracked blades and each blade had one crack uh, in each in the top serration on the uh, convex side of the blade. 
we took the, the two blades out, MPI'd the blades and found no defect. So we thought, whoops, we've uh, made a mess of the uh, phased array inspection. But on further analysis with phased array and also with eddy current array inspection, we confirmed there were defects there. It just that there wasn't detectable by penetrant or by magnetic inspection. Uh, later on, we did further lab work with MPI and DIPEN, and eventually we could find those defects. But it wouldn't have been found using the standard techniques that we had at the time, which relate to European standards. And as you can see from them, these defects are not short. They are 15 and 25 millimetres long, 3 millimetres deep, and missed by MPI. On the second station, uh, we found cracks in 11 blades, uh, 15 defects in total. All the defects were in the top serration again, uh, some on the convex side, some on the concave, and some on both. Uh, when we chop those up, we find that the cracks are very uh, are faceted near the surface and then very smooth subsurface. Of those defects, we found 12 by the initial phase of the inspection, so we missed three. Um, when we took those blades out, and this time we took the complete row out, um, we found um, 14 crack blades by MPI die pen. So it, the MPI and die pen was slightly better than the phase array. The defects missed by phase array were all sub five millimeters in length. So it, 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 the phase array did what it, it said on the tin. It found defects five millimeters and above. What the MPI and die pen didn't do was what we thought it should be able to do, which is one to two millimeter defects. So it missed, it missed one of those. We also did eddy current array inspection and we managed to find all 15 uh, crack blades. Now there could have been more, we just, eddy current is the most sensitive techniques that we have at the moment to, to find the defects. On the third station, there was 17 crack blades found by the initial phase of inspection, 21 cracks in total. Again, all the cracks were in the top serration on the concave and convex sides. Um, this time the defects were significantly longer than the other ones, some up to 92 millimeters long, but not very deep. And this was because there was multiple initiation sites as shown on the diagram. So there were several initiation sites of very small defects and um, they eventually join up to create one long defect, but very shallow. Because of that, the phased array, um, although detected the cracks in the first place, it only managed to find seven of the uh, 21 cracks in total. So the technique was good enough to alert our Steve Term engineers that we had a problem, but it wasn't good enough to find all the defects. However, the rest of the defects in this population were all sub five millimeters in length. So again, the phased array uh, did what it said on the tin, it found the defects five millimeters and above. Now, again, we took the blades out, did MPI and die penetrant inspection. And again, we didn't find all the defects. There were still five defects we couldn't find with those techniques. And then we repeated the exercise with eddy current arrays and we managed to find all the defects, or basically all the defects the Edicum could find. <coughs> so we just look at the performance of each of those four techniques. If you look at magnetic particle inspection, it found 29 out of the 38 defects in the uh, three examples I've shown. If we just use uh, the uh, European standard for MPI inspection, uh, we would have only found about 25 of those. So we've had to modify the MPI techniques to improve the detection of defects. And that's improved polishing, improved training and competence and a better awareness of what the inspectors are looking for. So you can see on there, it's not very easy to see, the original one shows a defect not detected and then as we improve the technique, we can find a defect showing the, the, the very faint green line on the screen. So it does show that the MPI is subject to operator competency training and the inherent 
capability of the technique. For penetrant inspection, it found a similar number of defective blades. It didn't find the same defects as MPI found. It found some of the same ones, but some different ones. So you could say applying both MPI and IPEN gives you a good chance of finding the majority of the defects. Uh, one of the problems for penetrant and MPI is it requires the crack to be fairly open at the surface. And we found certainly on station A that shot peening of the, uh, the blades uh, by the manufacturer effectively closes up the surface, the two surfaces of the crack. And it's very difficult for MPI to get sufficient flux leakage to create an MPI signal, and it's difficult for capillary action to work, which is required for the dye penetrant to, to show the defect. That's not the same for phase array or for eddy current. So it's very important to understand what surface what the surface condition of the blades are before you decide which technique you want to use. The eddy current performance, well, this today has found more defects than any other of the techniques. Um, it does require a certain amount of preparation. Unlike dye penetrant and MPI inspection, you can't just walk up to the blades and do an inspection. You tend to require a dedicated probe that fits that particular geometry. And that's because the coils have to be in intimate contact with the surface. It has proved to be very useful. Uh, we found, as I say, about 100 defects with this probe. Uh, very small in length. Uh, the majority of those defects are less than five millimeters long. And some of the defects are less than one millimeter long. And this equipment probe has managed to find all of them. One thing I would say, certainly on older blades, where you have corrosion products on the surface, that will limit the, uh, the, the ultimate capability of eddy currents. The phase of air performance, well, in terms of how many defects it found, it's performed the, the, the worst in, in the uh, series of all four of the techniques. However, this is the only technique you can use in situ. So it has that benefit. So if you require an inspection and you don't have a, a long enough outage to perform an ex situ inspection, this gives you an opportunity to have a quick look and see at the turbine and whether you've got any uh, sort of urgent issues to deal with. <coughs> so it's about risk management, really. If you can manage risk of potentially having defects five millimetres long by one millimetre deep in your turbine until your next inspection, phase array could be a, a good uh, solution. Just comparing them in a, in a graphical format, um, if you want the, the best NDT can offer, uh, as in terms of defect size, de detection capability, eddy current, from our experience, tends to be the most searching of the techniques, followed closely behind by MPI and dye pen. However, they have to be uh, performed by trained and competent inspectors, and I wouldn't suggest using those two techniques on uh, surfaces that have been shot peened for the, the reasons shown earlier. Phase array is the least sensitive technique, but it has the benefits of being an in situ technique. So in conclusion, the experience gained from finding so many defective blades has allowed us to quantify uh, the relative merits of four NDT techniques used for the inspection of, of routes on last day's blades. None of the techniques can guarantee a defect-free blade. All you can say is the size of defect you can find and potentially the size of defect that you'll miss. Based on these uh, experiments and the, the, the uh, site experience, we believe the eddy current the more sensitive technique. However, with an in situ need for inspection, the phase array does offer a solution to manage risk. Thank you.